up? It's me, Adri V, the go-getter, and I want to welcome you to the GCO Podcast. You see, this is a place you go to to get the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success. There is always a story to be told, and everything that glitter ain't gold. So understand this, there is no need for the cheat code when you got the G code. So get your notebooks and pens ready. It's time for us to get into it. Welcome to the G code. <laughs> You are now listening to the G Code with Adri V. Hey, what's up, my go getters? You know it's me, Adri V, the go getter. And listen, we back at it again, giving you that G Talk, giving you that G Code. Another episode of that podcast where we talk the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success because, listen, Everything that glitter is not gold and every story has yet to be told. So I need you to understand that there is no need for the cheat code when you got the G code. And in the G code, I speak with some dope go getters as we talk about their journey. And one of the things that I love most is the journey. And so many times, like I share with you countless of times on this podcast, we see the highlight reel of social media. We see every high and it's real, very seldom when folks share with us their lows. But for me, the lows are the things that I like to talk about because it breeds grit, it breeds character, and it breeds that mindset to not quit. And it pushes you into the space of true go-getterism, okay? And that's a made-up word, but I just gave it to you. <laughs> but today's episode, I am talking to a few go-getters who've had dreams of their own ambition from the jump and they have been creating an entire buzz in my hometown of buffalo in my city and because they just took home an emmy all right and they took home an emmy for the nfl 360 short film still here it is all about Buffalo's resilience, being a raw dog, out the mud, keep it going, still here, not stopping type of city. And it was made after our city was hit with one of the most wicked things that came through. It was truly an attack on black people, truly attack on my east side of Buffalo, where I live, where I have grown. And in one of our most vulnerable places to where we're shopping at one of the only only grocery stores on the east side of buffalo and it is what many have known to become you know may 14th it was a massacre um and then also we experienced a blizzard in 2022 where it took out so many people i myself and my sister was without heat and electricity for days and thank god we were able to survive but there were many people who didn't and so in today's episode you know we're going to dive into how the still here even came about and how it became narrated of course by jillian hainsworth who we're going to sit down and talk to um who was buffalo's first poet laureate um, and this entire feature film, short film, but I'm calling it a feature film, um, was co-produced by Augustus Clark, a.k.a. my boy Gus Clark. And this short film that is a complete brainchild of his, and he was given the autonomy to run with it and create, truly created a buzz around the country as one of the best short films, which exemplified how the NFL franchise can help bring people together in the worst case scenarios. Okay, now when it comes to Jillian and Augustus Clark, a.k.a. my boy Clark, they're going to give you the story of how this all came about, how Gus came through with the crazy alley, how he brought in people that has been riding with him. Shout out to my girl, Miss Mariah Robertson. And when these people crack the mic, you're going to hear all the passion and all the love they have for what is happening what has happened and how they were able to take home the emmy and bring it back to buffalo um 
This conversation is one that I love because it speaks to the grind, the grit, and the hustle. It speaks to the G codes of life, and it speaks to following your dreams, never giving up, and continuing on being able to share the story and share in your glory and opportunity. So what I need you to do is take some notes. We sat here for a while and got to talking, and baby... This was a great, a great one. So get ready for it. And as always, welcome to the G-Code. What's good, my go-getters? It's me, Adri V. And listen, I am so excited to be in the building with these Emmy Award winning individual black folks from Buffalo. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing to watch their journeys from the very beginning, but it gives me even greater joy to see them at the table because of the hard work they've done behind the scenes, before the scenes, and just getting to this space of grace, you know, where you get a chance to really say everything Thing I went through and everything I worked for has got me to this space. So before I get into this, I just have to say what's up, my go get us one more time. Welcome, of course, to Adri V's Go Get a District and the G Code if you listen to the podcast. And um, today we're talking to pretty the ugly and the grind to success. But today we're capitalizing off the success and then moving down into the grind for the introduction of these individuals who I'm gonna allow to introduce themselves because as I introduce to some and present to others, um, Miss Jillian. Miss Clark and the beautiful yeah. Mariah Robinson. Come on, Mariah. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to let you guys do your individual intros oh, cool. um, and introduce the go getters to the people. Go ahead, Jill. All right. I knew I was going to have to start. You knew it. <laughs> in the roundabout from the turn. All right. I am Jillian Hainsworth. I am the founding poet laureate of Buffalo. Um, I am a community organizer and an activist. Um, agitator, uh, question asker, mm -hmm. and now uh, Emmy winning writer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and born and raised on the east side of Buffalo from Kensington and Bailey, uptown stand up. And we say east side and not the. Yeah. I'm not going to get into it, but, but go ahead, go ahead, Gus. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's Gus, you know what it is, Augustus Clark, you know what I mean? DJ Gus, Slim Gus, the video shot oh. you know what I mean? Uh, born and raised Buffalo, New York, east side of Buffalo to be exact, Glenwood and Kerr to be exact, the dead end to be exact, you know what I'm saying? NFL producer and director now, you know? Everyone else, I feel like you guys know the credentials, the credits, and everything I've been doing, but it's, we here. We tap it Emmy Award it. winning two times. Two right? times. Two times. Come on. Two times. Two times. Two times. Come on. Come on, Mariah. And I'm Mariah Robinson, born and raised in Buffalo, New York. And um, on the Still Here feature, I was the associate producer. Um, and it was a pleasure to watch the ins and out and, you know, watch everything to come into fruition. So it was a hell of an experience. Indeed. And you going to, like, go run your credentials down? Yeah. Oh, you playing. you playing. You playing. She know. playing. Like, yeah, you know. But, oh, you going to be modest right now? Nah. No, nah. No, Talk your ish. Time. I'm a therapist. So yes. I'm a marriage and family therapist. I work in private practice. So I see children, kids, marriage, a couple all that in between um, you can catch me at Renovated Soul Marriage mm -hmm. and Family Therapy um, I'll drop that contact info if you need so as well oh you're going to drop it later because well. we like to talk <laughs> about therapy I like folks to get checkups from the neck up yes. so we're going to dive into that she tried it just now <laughs> did she <laughs> she tried to be real about this I know I just shared the flyer <laughs> that sure. things that she got going on so I wanted you guys to do your intros because I didn't want to miss a beat you know I know you but the thing is we have grown and morphed into a whole nother level the last time you was here it was in me nominated Jill right? right you you had just won your first one right. and now we on two and let's just kind of just d roll it on back from the moment you found out you guys were nominated for another one for Gus and another nomination another for one. you right another, another one. one and then getting to the present day of walking home with this hardware that is in front of us Listen, it's, you know, <laughs> shout out to, a big. first off, big shout out to the NFL 360 team, Trent Cooper, which was the co-producer, amazing guy, like one of the best in the business, you know, he took me under his wing four years ago, him and Julian Gooden, which is also another Emmy, Emmy Award winning producer, you know, they gave me my first shot at the NFL, you know, so being nominated, you know, even last year was big. Shout out to my brother Osahan for indelible legacy of Jimmy Ray. You know, I was a cinematographer on that one and that brother right there, like we started off as work colleagues and quiet as kept. 
he was one of the people that interviewed me for a full, you know, full time year round position versus wow. seven month contracts. And he heard about me. So he asked about, yo, you know, Slim Gus in Buffalo, one of his homegirls that was from Buffalo. And she was like, yeah, like, yo, he, yo, he the man in the city. You know what I'm saying? So that, that helped whoever you are. Much love to you. But coming around to still here when we heard about the nomination, I'm just like, this is, this is. The passion project This yeah. is my baby This is what I pitched To the NFL 360 team Which is an Emmy award winning team mm-hmm. You know um, Shout out to Dallas as well And it was just big Because I'm just like Jill didn't even know About this mm-hmm. This pitch Or this idea yeah. You know I never met Jill In person I messaged her on Facebook Like I need your number We have to talk the idea was already Pitched, pitched and, and green lit At that point You know what I'm saying And I'm like Yo Jill I got something for you from the city I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna run down We're gonna run down These topics together And then you just cook You know And I'm just like Yo she went crazy Yeah she did No No revisions You know what I'm saying Like A1 Only thing we had to do Was get it down the time That was it That was it But that's what I'm, I'm a, That's all I'm gonna drop For right that's now That's all you gonna yeah, drop I wanna drop too much I know That's out here Out coming. here being a real angel <laughs> You know what I mean Like a true angel in disguise Because they, they talk about People saying your name In rooms Right But this is really A whole nother level Where you like Yo I put a plan together For you in a right, room right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With you in mind And I didn't even Say nothing to you Right that's that's the next level. You know what I mean? Sure. And and there are many people who are not like that. But then there are rare few, you know, like Gus, that definitely hit you with a crazy alley. Mm-hmm. So let's talk <laughs> about this alley that you got. Because it's not even like you weren't prepared for it. Because this has been you your entire life. Mm-hmm. Right? And so when you got this alley, you got that call. You know, what was that? What was that experience? He's like, okay, Gus. Like, what was, what was yeah. the... <laughs> so, okay, when when Gus and I first talked about it, right, he was like, all right, we're going to... I need you to write this piece. It, it needs to capture all the things Buffalo has gone through. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it needs to be a poem, obviously. We want it to be poetic, but we need to talk about what happened on May 14th. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the snowstorm. We're going to talk about um, the firefighter who uh, we lost... Yep. Um, we're going to just run down what has been happening. And I'm like, okay. But then he was like, but we need it to be uplifting. And it got to still have something to do with football because it's a football show. Yeah. So after we first talked, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. What, He's well, pushing I don't you even know how to right do here. this. I'm like, you. okay, I got to talk about the worst things, but make it digestible and mm-hmm. honest still because it's important that we still control our narrative. But it has to be uplifting and it had a rhyme. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Um, but I was excited. You know, I've been working for the community in a lot of different capacities my entire life. Yes. Um, and at that point, I had already kind of taken the step from the professional world. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to take a chance on myself and I'm going to do my poetry full time. Um I left my job after May 14th Mm -hmm. because I was like, I just feel the pull from the community is so strong and I need the autonomy to be able to go where I'm being pulled. Um, But, you know, as an entrepreneur, stepping out is scary. Yeah. Scary as hell. So while I was a little bit overwhelmed with the task at hand, I was honored that I was even thought of to be the one to do it. Um, I was excited about the opportunity because I need like sustainability as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, okay, I started writing and I wrote this poem in one sitting. Um, we had a fast turnaround time and we talked about that. Yes, like, you did. So he he hit you with all this pressure and said, it's going to have to be delivered ASAP. Yeah. And I think I delivered the poem within like four or five days Mm. from the time, from when we actually met, like, okay, here's all the bullet points we need to hit. Um, I just sat down and wrote it. And the title still here, that came after the poem was written. So Mm. I didn't write the poem with that theme in mind. Um, That came after the fact. It came after. Yeah. So with that, and and I love the fact that you said that because I think people think you lead with a title and then then you build out behind it. But sometimes once you finish the body of work, now you sit back and go, what does this mean? What does this stand for? Yeah. Yeah. Let the story tell itself. Yeah. You know what's crazy about that? Like, you know, it was it was all types of titles attached. It was Buffalo Love, it was Buffalo Strong, it was Buffalo This, Buffalo That, you know what I'm saying? And 
Trent, you know, I was talking to Trent during the production. You know, it was like four days of production in Buffalo, like four or like 10, 12 hour days of production. And Trent was just like, yo, he's like, he's like, pay attention. Just pay attention. Because Trent came in to make sure, he was like, Gus, I'm coming to Buffalo just to make sure you do not fail. You know what I'm saying? And I owe Shout out to Trent. Shout yeah, out to Trent. Trent. Cool. Yo, that's so- Trent. Did I meet Trent that time when we were downtown? You, you did. Had to. I, yo, because I'm yeah. like, this got to be the vibe that I was getting because yeah. he was definitely there like as a huge support. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what he was like. Gus, I'm not going to step on your toes, but like, you know, I'm here for you and I got mm-hmm. you. So, you know, during those days, we were like going through names and then I think... You know, still here just resonated with us. He was like, he was like, yo, Gus, I think, I think yeah. it, should, it should be still here. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just it embodies everything that Jill's speaking to, yep. the vision, everything. You know. And then I spoke to my mom about it too, and she was like, that's it. Yeah, yeah I remember like, you calling me like, how do you feel about what you feel about still here? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Is like it? that's Is it. it. Yeah. That's the it one. Fit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. even even people saying still here, mm-hmm. like towards the end of that that feature. We implemented that in on the fly. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yo, we have the name. About two days in, we have the yeah. name. Let's get people to say still here, still here. Yeah. Still here. Yep. Still here. Still, still standing, here. still here. Yep. You know what I'm and saying? it's the truth after yeah. all we've been through. For sure. And I think sometimes we don't really look at it as like we've been dealing with a lot back to right. back. Right. Because sometimes you just keep running with it. I think mm-hmm. as black people, we kind of just keep doing it. And you can speak to that. Oh, you used to survive. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, it right. in survival mode, you know. And, you know, you being able to be an executive producer on this and supporting from that standpoint because you was there in the trenches each and every time and if, as we talk about still here and all the things that she was able to depict in the poem as a therapist yeah. you know what I mean like the words and everything that we had to deal with those are things that we constantly that, that we never going to forget Absolutely. it's going to f- forever penetrate us every time May 14 come into play it's taking us back to the day one mm-hmm. right so as someone who's has to look at things from a different lens constantly breaking it down and being able to regurgitate people traumas their experiences right you know being a part of this project how did that make you feel and what was your thought process when it's like when this is out this is what this is gonna look like because now you're on both ends you know what i have been with gus for what four years yeah since 2020 since we started the bills mafia the Mm -hmm. first one um so then when he invited me on i'm I'm like i had no problem following his lead because i saw his vision yeah and i'm just like i'm gonna stand i'm gonna gonna stick beside him yeah Yeah. i'm gonna stand beside him (laughs) that was a good decision so each year it got bigger and bigger and bigger but when this piece uh specifically still here came along i'm just like it holds a very special you know place in my heart Mm. um one of many reasons um when the crew stepped in um, they were boots on the ground. Like, of course, they wanted to capture Buffalo, um, but they wanted to get to know who and what Buffalo was about. Mm-hmm. So when they, you know, landed, they were boots on the ground. We were all up and through Buffalo. We were on the east side, west side, and every, everywhere yeah. in between. Yeah. Um, so I think that allowed them to handle handle this piece in a very sensitive manner. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is also what drove this piece as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Jill, everything was so intentional and purposeful. From what her nails, to yeah. the necklace, to her <laughs> hair, everything, um, and everything was so beautifully and intricately done. Um, as far as like the mental health piece, I think that they gave us a voice. They allowed us to be seen, All right? So I don't know. Do we make national news with the storm? Yes, we yes. did. We did, so, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's just like now people understand like Jefferson is a food desert. Mm-hmm. There are not enough resources where we're supposed to be at. And it's like those are one of the many factors of like, okay, people are trying to t- survive. If I'm trying to survive on my basic needs, how can I meet the needs of my, my mental health? Mm-hmm. So that's the part I saw, the biggest part I saw coming from like the mental health standpoint. Yeah. And even and I, when we had the, um, when we got the award, yeah. I remember like thanking Trent and thanking him for like looking are people in their face like and when I said that I didn't mean just literally like he did right Mm -hmm. but he hits me up sometimes to ask how my pastor is doing wow like we filmed my part outside of Johnny B. Wiley during the hood taste the buffalo like we had people (laughs) flying (laughs) drones he was in the trenches (laughs) yeah I had Trent in the trenches he loved it he was like he was like this I would live here like I love that I like this and it's like buffalo is a vibe and I think Sometimes we get so caught up in surviving and some of us get caught up in trying not to 
normalize what we're surviving, right? Like we want to praise our resilience, but we don't want to glamorize it yeah. because right, right. what we are surviving, we shouldn't have to. We should not. Yeah. Um, so we get so caught up that we forget to really notice like the gems that we have here. Mm-hmm. And he picked all of them up. Yeah. Like he noticed. Because he, he was coming in from a raw them. eye, you know? Yeah. gave us new insight. It's just like we coming from the perspective that we live here. We see this every day, but he right. has an appreciation yeah. to what yeah. I yep. think is normalized. Yep. Exactly. Yep. A complete different lens, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so with that aspect, you know, we people are introduced to you guys from where you are now. Right. Right? But I want to kind of dive in just a little bit to where, how you got started even moving in this direction because as I as I know Gus personally from yeah. the very beginnings, everything has built a built upon built upon. It's like a right. brick on brick on brick. Yeah, sure. Now we we at the brick house. You know what I mean? <laughs> now you're gonna paint a white, paint a black, however. Right, right. But it's like you have been building your house brick by brick. Right. You know, and so I feel like it's remiss if we don't introduce people to the early stages of how you guys even got to this space um, because those pieces matter. Yep. Those pieces matter to how you were intricately able to create a freaking poem in a matter of a few days with so much pressure on the Good NFL, luck. you know what I mean? And being able to deliver, not once but twice, on several occasions, right? And having that stored in you, mm-hmm. that wouldn't have been something just on a whim if you just getting started. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even just being able to play your role, like you said, said I'm gonna just sit back everybody can't do that and it takes real people to be able to I- identify what the needs are because I was getting my emails from you in the text messages <laughs> yeah. she was absolutely on point point. point. and, and on point. those kind of people are needed in every aspect and a success of a thing mm-hmm. but you developed that somewhere before you got here mm-hmm. and so I kind of want to dive into that because it's like those bedrock pieces of your beginnings or even the failures right. that helped taught you to be a better person or sharpen you for the position position you're in um, is really what got us these these Emmys in front of us, right? Sure. And so, um, you know, I'll kick off again with Gus. You know, we know you as a DJ, yeah, yeah. you know, before you was out here on your biggie moves, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you turned around and hit us with the slim. Yeah, you was yeah. in Buffalo killing it. Then yeah. you left us and went to LA and we love the jump. But let's kind of just talk about some of the ebbs and flows of those beginning stages. Yeah. And like Gus was really one of my first videographers <laughs> running with me at yeah. UB covering yeah. everything, down yeah. for what Whatever yeah. I had going on from the radio station. So whenever Gus calls and he's like, y'all want to do, or I'm a support regardless. Yeah, and if I can't sure, make man. it, I'm going to send somebody, it's right? Low, because low. he's been that consistent. Mm-hmm. So um, I just want to, you know, talk about that. So listen, it, it started off like, it was a lot, it was a lot of pain in that. You know what I'm saying? Like still here and like the feature, because it was just so much going on in the city. And I'm like, I'm just sitting in LA. I'm going to work in this office. The weather is, you know, beautiful. super clear. It's beautiful. But, you know, around Christmas when that storm hit, like, it was really tearing me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to work and I'm putting on the face. And, you know, people's like, oh, you know. Or like, you know, you know, actually, Osahan was the first person that reached out to me as soon as he seen it on the news. He was like, yo, bro, are you good? Is your family good? Like, your friends? Like, how's mom? Like, talk to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I don't want to tear up right now because that really meant a lot, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I work with a ton of people and this stuff was on the news. You know what I'm saying? And Osan came through, like, and just asked us to check on my wellness and my mental to make sure I was yeah. good. But, you know, I'm like, man, I got to do something. I'm going on Facebook and I'm just in Easy, my boy Easy and Nard at the time, like, they were back home. They weren't out in L.A. So I'm like, man, I'm sitting out here. And I just felt like, I felt like alone. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm going on Facebook and I'm seeing people begging for their lives. And I'm just like, yo, I can't even do nothing. My mom is trying to conserve her battery. So I'm talking to her whenever I can. You know, I, I was speaking to my boy Boogie. And Boogie was like, yo, bro, I can't even make it next door. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, it hit me, and I'm like, I have to do something. It was in my head, you know, and Easy is always telling me, like, man, make sure you journal. Journal, bro. Like, get it out your head. But then I had to talk with Osahan, and O was like, yo, man, you, you need to pitch it. You know, like, O was the first person who was like, yo, you should wow. do this. You know what I'm saying? You should do a spoken word piece. You get it out your head. And that was, like, my therapy session mm. with developing this pitch. You know what I'm saying? I got it down. You know, I was writing it. I was jotting it out. And this is all before I even contacted you. You know what I'm saying? Writing it down. I got with Phil. Phil Gentry, which is a super, he's like a journalist, like Emmy Award winning, right? Like another one. You know what I'm saying? Like this team is 
it's giants on this team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Phil was just, he was shaping it for the pitch before I even went to the pitch meeting. I'm running through Trent. Oh, Trent, Gus, I love this. We got to do it. Like, he he pretty much greenlit it before we even got to the meeting. Mm. To pitch it. You know what I'm saying? It's his show. NFL 360 is his show. And for those who don't know what greenlit is, I know 50 Cent say it <laughs> yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what does that mean for the layman terms? It is know? it is a go. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, approved. Green light. There's mm-hmm. no other process we have to go to. Like, it's approved. Just let's just get it Make done. It you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, you know, being able to tell people at work, like, yo, this is what was happening. And they like, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't know it was that many deaths. I didn't know it was that bad. It doesn't look that bad from the, the news standpoint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that hit, you know what I mean? And those people were like, damn, Gus, like, I'm sorry you're going through this. Yeah, I'm sending prayers with you. You know, it, it was a shift in the people that I talked to on a daily at work. And, you know, Mariah has been with me since 2020. She was my PA, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a personal assistant to I'm make sure the all the paperwork <laughs> now you hear. was good. You know what I'm saying? That was in 2020. You know what I mean? And Mariah was on it. I had to worry about it. Like, she handled business. And then when we came around for this one, for Still Here, I was like, yo, you're going to be the AD. That's the assistant director, mm-hmm. you know. But now you're upgraded to the AP, which is associate producer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this does not happen overnight. But if you get it. Now, Trent is like, yo, is Mariah there? Like, I just love Mariah. I just love Mariah. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, okay, figuring out the voice for this piece. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it only makes sense to, to hit Jill. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't see it any other way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to hit Jill. This is over the summer. My contract ended. My, I was on the seven-month contract at the time. It ended. I pitched this over the summer when I was not working technically on the books for NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Um, that was major too. Look at God. Yeah, because I told Trent, I told India Wright at the time, which is my like immediate supervisor. She's super great. I love India. That's like my sister too. And she was one of the ones that pushed for me to get in the door the first time around. So it's like crazy how these things work, you know. And, you know, I spoke with her and she was just like, yo, you, you know, make sure you stay in here. Make sure you stay in here. Make sure you get it done, whatever the case may be. But, um, they allowed me to voluntarily jump into whatever meeting that I was able to, you know what I'm saying? Quote, unquote, you know, you, you can't be in every single meeting, but yeah. hey, Gus, we're going to open the door and send you Zoom advice to your personal email because once your contract is done, you cannot access your NFL email. Like, mm. it is done. Slack, nothing, teams, none of that <laughs> nothing. stuff. You know what I'm saying? But they continue to keep me in the loop. I'm, I'm doing, Trent does a lot of development with producers and people he sees something in. So that was, you know, I'm going to all the camps, whatever the case may be, no matter what my accolades were, I'm still going to the camps to develop, to sharpen my blade because Trent is the best. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, I pitched this. I spent two months flushing everything out. Wow. I did not leave my house unless it was for groceries. I wasn't talking to anyone, but two months I spent like really flushing this thing out and getting it right. At that point, I already reached out to Jill, but now I got to jump in my producer and director bag. Mm -hmm. I got to get the shots together, you know what I'm saying, for the vision. Okay, cool, Jill talks about this, let's do this. I already seen this vision before, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I had to script it out. It's a full script Mm -hmm. to match Jill's words. You know, with the visions, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was very intense. And, you know, it, it was a rough time because I'm like, we're going through it. I got to talk to people. You know, like, I have to call all of these people. And that's where Mariah came in. Mariah was on, on boots on the ground already. Sure was. Getting releases because, listen. And if you didn't sign it, she was on your body. <laughs> for sure, because if you had to sign a release I too. I sure did. Because you know I saying? forgot mine. She's like, hey, send me a text. <laughs> exactly. Like, Girl, what you literally said, I was like, my bad. Exactly. But, like, location releases, we, it was probably 300 plus releases. It was maybe 100 at Signature oh, Cunt. Shout out to Kenny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, all of these moving pieces had to come in hand, like behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Just to make this make sense and make it work, you know, but spending that time that two months and now, now we're going to Buffalo to shoot for four days. Yeah. And Trent is like, I'm like, yeah, we working. And he said, I never seen a schedule like this. Cause Mariah was head of the schedule. So I was doing a lot of talking with Mariah. Okay, cool. We got to spend an hour, 15 here, 30 minutes here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Putting the time for driving to the next location. Like, mm-hmm. All of this stuff was pinpoint, and, you know, Trent called Dallas, which is also a part of 360 as well, too, like, his, his partner. Um, you know, he was just like, yo, I never seen 
a piece produced so well, mm. you know. But like all of the resources and just people that we reached out, in, like in Buffalo, they were just like, we told them what we're doing, and they were yeah. they were just with it. You know what I'm saying? But it was a lot of phone calls. It was a lot of phone calls that I had to personally make to people. Yep. To like, they may not even know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you? Where are you from? You know what I'm saying? What high school you go to? Like, I was on the phone with people for hours wow. a day. Like, yeah. Yo, this is what we doing. Oh, man, you know, I appreciate it. But they're also giving me that true realness. Because, you know, Jill going to keep it real a thousand percent all the time. You know what I'm saying? But you still have those people that are like, Yo, this is what's really been going on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when we got to even Pastor Charles, Pastor mm-hmm. Charles was like, yo, we appreciate you. Like that, like being at that church and seeing all those beautiful, beautiful black people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they were coming up and giving me hugs and just shaking my hand, like, we love you, we supporting you, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. Like, that's what made it all come together. And then we, that was in, that was in August of 2023. Mm. And now we're here. Here we are. Still here. May 2024. Still got Still Emmys. Here. You know what I'm saying? Still got <laughs> Emmys. Yeah, 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 for Still sure. Got Emmys. For sure. And so, Jill, you know, being able to have Gus give us that breakdown and then just even, you know, how he was able to to alley you in, you know, what was the prep work that you've done prior to this to position you? We knew you as our poet laureate, mm-hmm. right, in Buffalo, the first. Um, and then I was introduced to you through IC Success where mm-hmm. you won, you pitched, you know, you took home mm-hmm. some things. and But you've been an agitator, as you have shared, you mm-hmm. know, on the ground. So what made you decide to get into the space of allowing your words to be art? Yeah, so I, I grew up writing. Um, I graduated from Performing Arts, class of 2010. Shout out. <laughs> um, you went to Performing Arts. I did it. I went to McKinley. Oh, oh, oh. However, <laughs> art was a major, so here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so I went to Fredonia for college. It's a predominantly white college. Um, while I was at Fredonia, Trayvon Martin was killed. Mm-hmm. And... While I was the president of the Black Student Union at Fredonia, the college tried to cut the Black Student Union budget by like twelve thousand dollars. Mm. We had like the biggest budget cut that year of any student group. Um, so my job was to sign off on the budget as the president, and I refused to. And I held up the entire SUNY budget and in turn the New York State budget, just because I refused to agree to a budget cut that large. Um, I had the president of other colleges call on my cell phone at like 11 o'clock, like, you don't know me, but please, like, we gotta get our budget passed. And I'm like, nope, nobody gets anything. (laughs) And if we don't get our money. Um, That's how I got into organizing. When I came home, I um, got into social work. So I was a counselor for survivors of interpersonal violence. I was an advocate in uh, DSS in the emergency homeless unit and in um, integrated domestic violence court. Eventually, I started managing a grant for the Department of Justice, making sure that colleges were in compliance with all of the Violence Against Women Act, the Clary Act, different legislation that makes sure that students are safe from interpersonal violence while they're in school. Um, at the same time, I started writing. Uh, when Darren Wilson, the officer who murdered Mike Brown, was not indicted for that murder. I wrote a poem called Little Black Boy. At the time, I wasn't trying to become a poet. I'm dyslexic. I didn't find out until college. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I struggled my way through college. My graduation day was my eviction day. Like, it was a struggle. So I wasn't trying to become a poet laureate. I was just trying to voice how I felt about that moment. And a lot of people were like, you articulated the entire, like, everything I feel. It's very comp- it's complex. Um, we are angry. We're sad. We're hopeless. And you articulated that in a way that doesn't make us feel like the world is ending around us. Mm-hmm. Um, so people started booking me. And I'm accepting performances. I don't even have poems. I got one poem. And people are like, can you do two? Can you do three? I'm like, I got you. So I had to start writing poems fast because I'm making promises that I'm going to do multiple pieces. Right. And I just got one. I got one, <laughs> one trick pony. All you pony. need is one. That's it. <laughs> um, so I started writing. Eventually, I started performing at all of the protests and rallies, um, vigils when people would get killed on the east side, funerals of people I never met. Um, people were just calling me like, I need you to just come and speak to this crowd. Mm-hmm. So I just started showing up. Um, I always say, 
a lot of artists and poets, especially writers, they get started in academia or in the like open mic type of environment. But me, I was literally in the middle of the street with a bullhorn. Um, I thought we our city should have a poet laureate because I thought that we needed to show an emphasis on the importance of the art of storytelling mm-hmm. and the importance of making sure that the people control the narrative of what's happening. Yeah. Like we can't ever get to a position where our politicians get to decide what our narrative is. Um, they shouldn't have that power. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, we need a poet laureate. So I advocated for two years, um, knocking on common council members' doors, like, can we do this? Some of them would not even respond. And one of them finally was like, okay, we can do it, but it's gonna be a process. Learned how to write resolutions, started lobbying with these politicians, like, listen, this is gonna come to the floor at some point and I need you to let it pass. Eventually it passed and they made me the first poet laureate. um, And people started considering me like the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, right? (laughs) I'm a voice within the people. I'm not the voice of the people. We are not a voiceless people. Mm -hmm. Um, So even that, like, I really try to emphasize that. Like, never lean on my voice too much. Because I might say something you don't agree with. Um, (laughs) I'm going to speak my mind and speak my piece. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, And I'm going to do it with honesty. So... I think all of those experiences, having a background in advocacy and social work, um, learning how to organize, learning how to stand in a room of people who don't look like me, who whose opinions don't match mine, yeah. and like stand firm in my beliefs, um, writing and being thrust into the spotlight, especially after the summer of 2020 and then um, after May 14th, you know, I never had media training. And I never wanted to be in front of a microphone all the time, but eventually it was like, no, this is, this is your role here now. So do it. I think all of those experiences prepared me for that phone call. We need to do this and we need to fast. Um, Because you were writing resolutions. I was writing resolutions. You was already preparing. By then I had already written the uh, tribute piece in tops water. Mm. And that was the time I when I got called to do that I didn't feel prepared mm. and I remember calling my mom and I was crying and I'm like this is not fair like nobody else is being asked to do this nobody else here is being asked to speak to the most painful thing we ever experienced mm. to do it with grace to make it rhyme right to know that these words are going to last forever this is too much I cannot do this it's engraved in the building. and my mom is like listen we get called to things and we run through it or we run away from it. So you just gotta decide, pick a side. Mm-hmm. Either if you're gonna get out of the way, get out of the way because the work has to get done. Yeah. But if you are about doing the work, you just gotta do it. So I got through writing that piece, which was the hardest Shout out to piece your mom. I ever. Yeah, my mom, she don't play. Yeah. <laughs> so then when Gus called, I'm like, okay, this is still gonna be a challenge, but if I can write water, after May 14th. I can write this. I got to be able to write this. I didn't know I was going to be the one to say it. So let's just (laughs) get that clear. When I first wrote it, we thought somebody else was going to say it. And then when I sent the voice recording, they were like, we can't hear this in anybody else's voice. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to have to say it. But I thought I was going to be in a studio. I didn't know I was going to be like on camera. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the first time (laughs) that's ever happened. Wow. We had like speaking pieces where we had like a... You know, someone pinning for a big artist or to recite the, these, these these spoken word pieces, but this is the first time we showed the face mm. of of a woman too. At yeah, that. A, come black on. Woman. Come, come, a black come woman. A black woman. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time, and it's a lot of you know women that are actually pinning these pieces. Yeah. You know, so Emmy Award winning. Yeah. At that, but now, no. now we, we 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 got one. We, we got one. We got one. <laughs> we got one. You know what I'm saying? But that was that was major too. Yeah. That was major. And that's a pretty big deal of preparation, you know, meets opportunity, you know, and that's that's really what it is, because we have no idea why we are doing a thing. You know, I I will never forget um, before my mom passed, I was going hard in the gym. No idea. Mm -hmm. While I'm lifting heavy, I'm squatting heavy. 
then to later to have to carry my mom back and forth. So it's like you never know the depths of why you're preparing for a thing and how intricate it can be yeah. involved in your life. Because I was like, why am I really squatting my weight right now? I was doing it. I was doing my big one, and I didn't realize I was gonna have to actually start really carrying it on a whole nother level. So it's just it's funny how God will position you mm-hmm. and prepare you for it. You have no idea what's coming your way, yeah. and so you know I, I'm gonna toss it to Mariah because to be an intricate person right everybody is not meticulous everybody has not attention to detail everybody does not have that follow up and follow through because I know I've missed an email or two and to get somebody like hey hey send you a text hey, it's me um, need to make sure you send this over that's a gift because everybody don't got that everybody can't be trained in that space and to genuinely do it without a you know issue and to also play a position to where it's just like I'm just here to be a support you know where did that that mindset come from and I, and I and it makes sense because with you being a therapist you gotta always be willing to consistently listen right. digest and see what the needs are right I think that naturally is just ingrained in me mm-hmm. um, but when we first started um, sorry what you have to me <laughs> where did it come from? Oh, where like did it come you from? So I have a, a background and I've been in mental health for the last mm-hmm. over 10 years. Um, I worked in mentally ill geriatric community. I've worked in emergency foster care. I've worked in foster care. And then I pivoted to, you know, actually being a clinician. Um, and, you know, if you don't document something there, mm-hmm. it didn't happen. It did not happen. So I think that's where that kind of became ingrained in me where I was like, okay, I have to follow up with this person. And I'm, I'm talking to, you know, DSS. I'm talking to uh judges I'm talking to lawyers I'm talking to family members so it's just like I've always kind of had that follow-up and you have to be personable mm-hmm. to people so it's just like no matter what somebody said whatever trauma they were going through I think because I've been in the field for so long I, I wasn't ever phased by it um so you kind of get desensitized to it but for me it was in a good way because it's like okay I hear you I see you I can let me let me show up for you yeah. um, in that way, and I think that was very important. Just even in this piece, like I'm here as a support for them, um, and even after um, the May 14th, um, I went out and I had to be present, and that was such a heavy feel. It was like mm-hmm. the weight of the world was on it you. Was. I think back then I was in school, so there was only but so much I can do because I wasn't, you know, permitted to actually practice yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I gotta, gotta help. do something in whatever capacity I'm able to do so. Um, so I think that's where it all started for me. Um, as far as the Emmy, um, I'm also, I work at the Boys and Girls Club as a therapist there as well. So we were talking about, you know, meeting basic needs, like if, I'm, you know, their kids are surviving, families are surviving, they're going through um, CPS calls, they're going through DV, they're just trying to survive. So when Gus asked me to ask, you know, to get consent for the kids, oh my God. <laughs> and then I think when we came back on, well, when I came back on Wednesday, I was able to go in and tell them like, yo, y'all was in this feature. Y'all, had, y'all got an Emmy, y'all want an Emmy. Mm-hmm. So that was just like huge for me. Um, so that's, that's my, my get up. I love it. And so bringing together the forces, you know, um, to bring this power play back, you know, like what was that day like in the prep for going? So you guys get the nod, like, yo, got a nomination. And then you're walking into this space, you prepping for it. Y'all was looking fly, okay? <laughs> I love the, I, I'm a whole black person. I love wearing black. So when I saw the black, I was like, yep, that's, that's that where it's at. We yeah. didn't plan that. Didn't Listen, it, it worked. It worked out. I loved every bit of it. So what was it like once you was like, yo, we got another one? And preparing for that and being able to walk into that space yeah. and that place. Give me that rundown, because I know y'all had to cut up a little bit. Listen. Gus, you cut up when you came back in. I love the video clip oh, in yeah. the hotel. Listen, listen, listen. Shout, first off, shout out to my lady, Joy. She's in the building. Shout out to Joy. She definitely styled me from top to bottom. The shoes. You it know, was the shoes for me. It was the shoes. Yes. She gave me, excuse me, she gave me two weeks of hell because she was like, uh-uh, this ain't it. No, Listen, no, no. you need that in yeah. your life. She was like, open up that shirt. You ain't wearing no tie. Show that show that chest here. Show that tie. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Joy. <laughs> Even down to the accessories and stuff like that so that was cool and you i'm not a i am not a suit guy mm-hmm. like the last time i wore a tux and it's gonna it's gonna feel like a flex i was at, i was with marcia ambrosius uh-huh. at dr dre's mom's birthday party i remember when you was the camera guy at 
big flex at the Bel Air Hotel. Big flex, you know what I'm saying? God dang, if I couldn't figure out what my, which one it was, I would hit it. <laughs> <Trouble Yeah. there. laughs> I don't forgot which one it is. I gotta make sure I label it. But, but that was that was crazy. Like that's that's the last time I put on the tux, and that was in 2018. Wow. Well, you, know you gotta do saying? it more often, Joy. <laughs> make sure you get it some more. Put it in the closet. Yeah. But um, it, it was cool. Like you know, I spent a lot of time just really prepping and getting ready for that because I'm like, man, I gotta be clean. I gotta be fly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit up my my guy Eric, which is at Superior Frame, uh, Frames LA, and he got me together with my frames, mm. my vintage frames, vintage only man. Come that's on. my dog. But he was like, "Yo, we met like twice." I'm like, "Okay, cool. What, what you got for me, man?" And he just he lined me up with some fire, some one on ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, "All right, cool. We good." But even going up into that moment, like my bro Diggs, you know Diggs, yep. him and Easy pulled up. I love that. They just drove to New York the day of. I'm like, listen, man. Those are I, friends. Right. To the and end. I was like, listen, listen, NFL covering his room, so I'm gonna put y'all name on it. Yep. You know what I mean? And y'all just mob I'm gonna give y'all a key. I talked to Mariah at like 10 a.m. Oh like, yo, God. we out here. Mariah was like, sure, I'm about to catch a flight. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. put, I'm put your name in the room too. Like yep. you get in, put your stuff in there, you good money. You know what I mean? And just going there like Jill, like, yo, you ready? Jill was doing her makeup. She booked somebody out there in New York to do her makeup, you know, and we pulled up. We was clean. I'm like, yo, we getting over XL today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> even though the video was only eight minutes away, we could have walked for real, for real. Nah, nah. that walk back was nah. brutal. The walk back was, the, yeah. walks, the walk the back blocks was in the city ain't it. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> my feet was right hurting oh. just as much as Jill's. Yeah. Like, Why we did y'all do that? We was, walking, oh. we was just on a hot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just wanted in me. We like, let's walk back. Like, Y'all crazy. Y'all would have been like, limo me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Diggs, Diggs and Easy being there, because I know Mariah got in a little later. Mm -hmm. But um, with Diggs and Easy, man, they just captured just all of the content, like yeah. the content gods. I, I call Easy the content king, and he legit was doing all this off his cell phone, off his iPhone. You know what I'm saying? Like all these Emmy Award winning photos and yep. photo shoots. You know, all off the iPhone and Diggs is going crazy with an Android. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. He gave me one of my hardest photos. And then even <laughs> let's let's bring it back five days before the Emmys. I had Kelvin and Easy and Diggs. And Kelvin is on the photographer lacing my for me for my commencement speech out, mm -hmm. you know, my yep. alma mater. So I'm Shout like, out to you for that this one. It's crazy, but when we was just out there, you know, I'm like, hey, we pull it up, then we getting in this big Escalade, XL, whatever it is, you okay. know what I'm saying? Pulling up, looking fly, looking clean, and Official. stepping out, you know what I'm saying? We looking good. Then it's more photos. Like, Easy and Diggs took photos for us up until. We went through security because it, it was it was very tight. And, mm -hmm. and Diggs threw on the field. So I'm getting in the Emmys, right? And he got there and seen how tight it was. Yeah. Like it was real. <laughs> oh, it's super. And we tight. had to go. We had to get on the elevator too. But like it was all types of metal detectors. Cool. Go in. Go up top. Then they had envelopes with our names on it, with our tickets. And show like, your ID. Show your ID, <laughs> like everything. And we get into a room, and I'm like, yo, we here with the biggest and best. Big in dogs. The, in the be in like in the business, you know what I'm and saying? And y'all like, are national, big dogs, too. We big we dogs, big too. Dogs. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen, it's funny, because I seen, like, I seen a brother when I walked in there. I didn't know him, but he was the only brother I had seen at the time. I'm like, yo, what's your name, bro? <laughs> Dapped him up. Cool. He's like, yeah, but we was already on the same page. You know, yeah. that, you know how that yep, go. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We walk in the rooms, and then it was maybe about 20 to 30 people from, like, my actual NFL 360 team there. Mm -hmm. So we was able to mingle with everybody, you know, and it felt good. But just seeing it, like, all these people, was cocktail hour, you know. But it, it wasn't a lot of us in that room. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's one thing that definitely stood out. Did it make me intimidated? Hell no. Never. Like, we here. You know what I'm saying? We, <laughs> rocking, we rocking with y'all, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all competing against each other, you know, and... That was dope. Yeah. Like we just kind of work in the room, just kind of just filling it out. You know what I'm saying? Like I, we weren't nervous or anything like that. But I tell you, we were nervous when that category came because mm. that show was long in person. Yeah, it's so long. all shows are it long so in person. Long. Boy, they oh do a crazy edit job for the for the preview. But and, and we were like all split up, so it was like we were like on ground level. We had mm -hmm. some nice seats. We were in the yeah. back, so I'm like cool. It's like kind of chill back here. You know what I'm saying? We're not under these lights the whole night. Mm -hmm. And it was like me, Jill, and it was Queen Quinn, and like Osan's crew. You know, Osan, he had a 
a total of five Emmy nominations mm. and four for uh, one, uh, Chief Who Walked the Sea, which is an amazing feature as well, too. But before that category up, that last card category, we were in it together. Yeah, we were both against each other. We were, we were against each other, but I'm like, yo, this is not a pickup game of basketball. Like, this is not a debate on Facebook or right. online. Like, bro, we competing at, the na- at a national level against yeah. each other. Like, this is hard, bro. This is hard. It's, it's, you know what I mean? I can yeah. say that. Keep it clean. Yeah. But this is hard. But before, you know, that category came up, Osan looked over like, Slim Jill. Like, good luck, man. Yeah. Like, good luck is love, man. I love y'all, man. Like, it's either one or the other. Yeah. One been of happy. us need to take it. One of us yeah. had to take it. You know what I'm saying? Because we were in a category with, so it was NFL 360, it was CBS, it was NBC, it mm. was Peacock. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Football. Sunday Night Football with yeah. Fox. It was crazy. Um, you know what I'm saying? But once that time came, my heart was beating mm. through my back. Like, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Like, yeah. I can feel it. Like, my whole yeah. body was just, it was beating. You know what I'm saying? And when he opened up that car and he said, NFL 360, we all, like, it's lean right forward. Here. Yeah, right this Come on, here. that's the car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so when, you know, he called, he's like, NFL 360, we all leaned up. And as soon as we heard the stick, I'm like, oh. Yeah, I'm so screaming, it's like, it's up. what? And we had to walk by, like, we were dead center in our <laughs> row. So we had to walk by 15, 20 people. Uh-huh. I'm screaming, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, just getting my voice back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, let's go. And I turn back, look at O and, you know, Queen Quinn. I'm like, I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Chill, let's go do this. Let's go. Let's go. So, you know, you, you move your legs and your feet to the yeah. side. Oh, no, go ahead. You go by. These folks wasn't moving? No, they, they were moving. Oh, we was bulldozing. Oh, I'm about to say, I would have been hopping over them. Like, they might have been standing in their seats because I'm just I'm yelling, screaming the whole time. And people was like, yo, bro, I can hear you screaming, let's go, like, in the stream. You know what I'm saying? So, but it was good and just like, Listen, Jill, like, guys don't let me fall. I'm like, shoot, like, I'm trying to tuck fall. in my shirt because I've been sitting, I've been sitting down for so long, make sure my drawers ain't showing. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, I make sure I'm clean. Like, because I got on hills and it's an incline, yeah. and I'm like, last thing we need. I don't even feel like I'm walking. Like, right, I, right. I don't even know what's happening. Wow. I'm just trying to get to the stage. We trying. We had to go like down three little steps. We, yeah, we walk back up three steps, and then what people don't realize, it was a person standing up in the front because we were all split up. Mm-hmm. And it was like, yeah, I seen this guy standing up clapping for you guys. That was Trent. That was Trent. Wow. That was Trent. The one person standing up in the Trent. That I was Trent. love it. The one person standing up and like watching that later mm-hmm. because there's a lot going on at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But watching that later and seeing Trent, I'm like, yo, I got so much love for this man. Yo, you know what for I'm real. saying? Cause I like, like Trent. Only, and and Trent, like Trent hit for four, for four uh, nominations as well too. And he hit wow. for one. You know, but... <clears throat> it's called Heroes NFL 360 Heroes Which mm-hmm. is an amazing feature As well too But I'm like I'm, I'm watching Jill up I'm just thanking God As we walk Yeah I, You know I sister up the steps And she she received that Emmy And I'm just like Jill We here Yeah Talk your shit yeah. you know yeah. So what did you say Jill What did you okay, say Well first Just let me say uh-huh. So leading up to the Emmys My friends I'm not like a fashion girl I hate getting my hair done like I hate it oh, and that's so why you got they, friends that's gonna gather you exactly so they chose what I was gonna look like all the way down to the color of my locks yes. they were like we gonna dye your locks like a couple weeks before so you have a chance to adjust to the color and we gonna curl it so they got me together um, a makeup artist came and helped me but I was so nervous so last year I got nominated for my first New York Emmy mm-hmm. it was a regional Emmy and um, I knew about four or five other people who also got nominated and I was the only person who didn't win Mm. so this year and last year I'm like yo it's mine I'm putting my name on it like I'm claiming it I did that that's I'm gonna win and I didn't Mm. and talk about a humbling experience right so this one came around and I was like okay I'm going to make sure that I give the nomination enough credit because last year I did not give my nomination enough credit Mm. so I'm like we're in the room we're invited like I didn't pay to get here you know what I'm saying like they booked my flight they booked my room like that's a win I already won so Gus told me a few days before he called me he was like just so you know if we win your name is going to be the one that said you have to be the one to give the speech so write a little speech just get something together I'm like 
I'm right, no speech. We probably not Gus with win. the crazy calls every time. Yeah. Every, listen, Gus with the crazy every calls. Every time you call, I'm like, okay, what the is nerves. He about to say? Um, but I'll I didn't write a speech because I didn't know if we were gonna win, and I didn't want to go home with a speech and no win. Mm. So I'm like, I'm just going to focus on the fact that we there, we won already. Who's being present, like we Buffalo kids, and we are in the Lincoln Center, standing up against Sunday Night Football. You mm. know what I mean? Like that's a win. So. When they called still here, I just started saying, like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, I couldn't believe it. And then I'm just, like, yelling at Gus, like, don't let me fall. Like, <laughs> please, I don't want to fall in front of all these white people. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we've made it onto the stage. I barely remember the walk besides <laughs> hearing Gus and knowing what I said. I don't actually remember walking down. They gave me the Emmy. He's like, it's heavy. I'm like... Thinking I'm, I don't want to drop it. You know what I mean? You know how it is after you have shoes on for hours. My feet are starting to slide. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, so when I started talking, I just, you know, of course, first I thank the Academy, which I'm like, who am I? Like, look at that. I just thank the Academy. Yes. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, God and my family. But then I just started talking about Buffalo because I feel like when all – all goes wrong talk about where you come from um i did shout out gus for being the visionary and trent for getting to know our community and making sure that the video reflects that but then i just told people like listen we're from an amazing city and it's loud and it's colorful and it's strong mm -hmm. um i did tell a little joke about how none of them would know anything about buffalo if it wasn't for chicken and josh allen and they started cracking up and i'm like and she's a comedian, like <laughs> a comedian. <laughs> um, but it was just such an amazing, amazing experience. Like after they um, said, you know, accepting this award will be writer Jillian Hainsworth, which again, I'm dyslexic. Like I didn't, I never had confidence that I was going to be a successful writer. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So to hear those writer, words, Jillian. you know, to for the Emmy to be because of the writing is just like okay like i'm in my purpose like, this is what i'm supposed to be doing because there is no way that somebody who whose guidance counselor wouldn't even help me apply for college mm. like don't even try where that lady at Come right on. where that lady at? Right. Let's, go, let's go take a picture with and this to Emmy. Be on that stage for a an award for writing was just like okay god i see you um to be standing next to somebody who's from my community yeah. you know what i mean another black person we Two black people with locks from the east side of Buffalo standing on the stage. On a dead end. That right, right. there, from that right there end. has a That's, whole nother terminology You could preach with a it. sermon about that. The dead end. <laughs> yeah. And like, no, it's not. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was just, it was just like magical. It was an experience I will never, ever forget yeah. for the rest of my life. Um, I made a little TikTok about just like the day and I keep watching it because it's like, is this real? Like real. we got home and everything happened so fast. Even going backstage, they're handing me all this stuff and <laughs> and I'm just like, you get like I don't know what bags. to do. Yes. I don't Shout know what to, to do bags. with it. So Gus is coming and taking it out of my hands. Like, put that down. You don't need that. Like, cause they're taking pictures and I'm holding like all of this stuff. Gus People is like, are... ain't nobody pay for that. Oh my First goodness. thing you walk in here, we move this water out the way. We ain't got no sponsorships. It just happened so fast. <laughs> it happened so fast. Even some guy was like, asking me to take pictures and videos of him and I'm doing it because I'm just like shook and I just don't know what's happening. I'm like, okay, sure. And then Gus is like, man, she won. She's not taking no more pictures of you. <laughs> and shut it know. down. Shut it down. Let's go, guys. Um, <laughs> I had executives from ESPN and Netflix coming up to me like, your video was amazing. Your speech, you had the best speech of the night. Like, yeah. like we really put on and we brought home an Emmy that so many people can feel ownership over. Right. Like, that's that's the whole goal. You know what I mean? And, 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 and it was met because when I saw the post, I mean, I'm screaming, like shaking the phone because <laughs> I'm so geeked up. And yeah. then, you know, then the flood of the pictures and the flood mm -hmm. of the videos. Mm -hmm. And it's just you, you're happy because it's like it's a win for them, it's a win for yeah. us. Right. You know what I mean? And when you know the people intricately, you mm -hmm. like, yo, all that hard work. That Did you drive to L.A.? I guess in 37 hours I remember I moved, listen me, me I, re Biggs. I remember y'all documenting this yeah, so it's like yeah. I think about these moments in time where you just like 
people when we were stepping out as a creative and you in, in this space and zone you have no true blueprint mm-hmm. you're literally going off your gut you're going off your heart your passion and you're hoping that someone sees something in you that you see in yourself yeah. right. and that they were willing to give you a chance and then when a chance come the thing is you can't blow it you know what I mean you gotta, you gotta lose yourself in it shout out to Eminem for that one mm-hmm. but the thing is it's just like the many sacrifices yeah. that got you to here and it's just like yeah I, I felt I it just tri- I just felt like a time zone f- quick glimpse when it was like the wind I was like man I remember and that and them driving across I remember you blowing up your truck yeah I remember that you know what I mean yeah. I was like boy really up out of here yeah let's I go I didn't tell anybody either like I didn't tell anybody like I mean my my immediate like family and friends I did a little like going away Mm-hmm. Situation at my my godfather's crib mo, which is like the ultimate lounge, by the way. Yes. But um, you know, I didn't want to like just make it super public. You know what I'm saying? Because I hit people after I landed, like, yeah. after I made it there. But Diggs is definitely a road warrior. Yes. That U-Haul hitch, we drove, we didn't stop unless it was for gas. My mom's blessed us with like all types of fruits, nuts and <laughs> berries, and water, Gatorade. You know what I mean? And, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, that last, oh my goodness. So I moved out of my apartment, I moved everything into my mom's crib like a week before I moved, you know what I'm saying, just to close out that apartment. That mm-hmm. I was and, man, like, I was crying. Mm-hmm. Like, I was bawling my eyes out crying because I'm like, yo, I'm not going to be five minutes away from, you know, my mom. Whole other time zone. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, it was tearing me up. And I'll go hug my little brother, which is, this dude is just a savage, like, you crying for <laughs> young, young my younger brother you know what i'm it's saying it's always like that them younger ones is built different yeah, they, he's definitely built different but like my mom's like don't cry i'm gonna start crying so we was crying together you know what i'm saying and i got there and i made it i cried like i cry a lot yeah you know what i'm saying let it out like even doing those drives like you know like vegas you know what i mean when i'm working like I'm by myself in the car, like I'm just playing music that reminds me of my family. And people don't people don't see that side. Obviously, I'm not on no Tyree stuff putting the phone in front of myself while I'm crying. But, <laughs> you know, um, no shade to him. But you know what I'm saying? Like uh, he need to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I'll be letting it out, man. Like yep. it's a it's a part of like it's a healing process, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a part of my character. Yeah. You know, like I, I done lost a lot of people being out there in LA and feeling like you don't have any family and friends. To like lean on and talk to like I got my brothers out there that's super close shout out to my, my bro James Wynn Jimmy Hustle Cordero you know what I'm saying like those are my key guys out there you know that I spend mm-hmm. Osan as well too that I talk to on the regular but a lot of times like my mom came out to visit LA the first time and we were everywhere mm-hmm. like put her in the hotel I'm like yo mom we out here every day I'm walking her to the room every night you know and she's just like oh my god you really walking to the room I'm like hell yeah like you're my yeah, mom you're like, my mom sure you secure you know what I'm saying yeah. but easy nothing whipped up some sangria now she got some sangria in her hotel with like some yogurt <laughs> and waters and stuff like that you know and I'm just like when she left Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. I'm sitting at my desk, door closed in my room, Missing and I mom. am bawling. I am bawling because I'm just like being able to look over into the passion seat. And you got your mom's, what you just enjoying it. Like I don't want to go to none of the touristy spots. We, like where, where we at? Where the real LA at? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it was just it was enjoyable, and even like at the commencement speech at Hilbert, like she didn't know I was going to honor her. Mm-hmm. That was completely off guard. I had her stand up and Joy, my, my lady, she she captured that beautifully because they were both sitting in the front row. She didn't know that was coming. You know, I only mm. told like a few people about it that I was doing that, but just giving her flowers and just knowing like, yo, like I really owe it all to you. You know what I'm saying? The only reason why I went to college is because you graduated from Syracuse oh. University. You know what I'm saying? When you did it back in the day, but it, it just, everything just amplified and just made things just so much better you know but having this win come back like this is not just a win for us it's not just a win for Jill it's a win for the entire city like this is yeah. ours you know what I'm saying like and, and we mean that you know so it's, it's pretty- and we and we felt that yeah. because we felt just as invested you know like I said it's, it's a beautiful thing to see people chase a dream and achieve it right and there's so many people who don't um, and so when we have those individuals who are truly genuine with it, and then you're you're not selfish in your endeavors and your opportunities, right. you put everybody in. You know, not only did you alley oop, um, Jill, but you made sure anybody who had anything going on that is positive, that is Buffalo reflective.
collect it. Right. You pulled them in, you know what I mean? And you, you pulled in Mariah, you pulled in the rest of the team. You didn't forget anybody, mm-hmm. you know? And there's many people who get to Hollywood, they get Hollywood, right, right. you know? And you, you kept that, you kept and stayed grounded. And I think that's a question, you know, as you guys are moving and elevating in your rightful spaces, you know, what are some things that's gonna keep you grounded? And, and when we say grounded, it's like, I don't really like the word humble, Right. Because just the definition in itself is like, that's wild. Mm-hmm. Why would I ever want to live by that definition? So I'll say like grounded. So it's just like more of a factor of being able to still be connected to the people that have kind of built you up in those times. And then also respecting those play- people, places and, and items that has also played a factor in your growing. So what are some ways, you know, and I'll leave that for each of you to kind of just answer ways that you stay grounded in these moments where it's just like, let's not forget. Um for me is it's really been just trying to find your purpose mm-hmm. you know like I spoke I speak about this all the time like man we work nine to five sometimes you know what I'm saying you got to get your paper you do your eight you hit the gate you know what I'm saying <laughs> and, and even I feel like that you know I would yeah. speak to my guys about it like man I feel like it's something else I should be doing I don't know what it is but you're accomplishing so many big things at like a fast rate you know it's like you know, what, what's left to do you know what I'm saying but I feel like as long as you just stay in you don't tap out because you just don't know how many people are depending on you you may not know these people personally but they may be looking up and following your journey but if I quit if Jill quits if Mariah if anybody in this room today if you quit you know what I'm saying you don't know who dreams you may just shatter overnight you know what I'm saying like yo I look at your page or you know what I'm saying this and that I have so many people pulling up to me and like legit I put up to Easy's crib you know what I'm saying like and people tracked me down like they followed the car and got out was like yo man like just want to tell you I love you I love that Easy's my proof for that you know what I'm saying but we go to Wegmans somebody I do not know his brother showed me crazy love you know what I'm saying walking through Wegmans people like yo man thank you for doing yep. this man we need this you know what I'm saying I, yep. man he was rapping the east side heavy you know what I'm saying like that's what it means to me yeah. I want to continue doing whatever that is whatever these people see yo I love you I'm telling everybody I love you mm-hmm. I don't care who you are love you have a blessed day you know what I'm saying like but that's that's all I got for that I want to just make it to the ladies um, for me I would say a couple things. I would say we have to put more of an emphasis on who we want to be than we do on what we want to do. Yeah. Um, I think we are so driven by what we want to accomplish, driven by our goals, that sometimes our boundaries get lost in yep. that. Sometimes the things that we are supposed to stand for gets lost in that. And once you get to a point where you know who you are, you know what you stand for, you'll start to know which opportunities to take you'll know who you need to align yourself with better um and that's important but also I say I I like to surround myself with people who don't care that I'm a poet Mm -hmm. like I have friends who will get together and I'll be stressed out about everything I have going on and they'll be like we're not talking about work like let's talk about you let's talk about your mom let's talk about your sisters and the kids um I surround myself with people who don't place my value in what I do do. and how many Instagram followers I have and any of that. Mm -hmm. Like, their value is truly, truly in me as a person. And they hold me accountable. Um, They challenge me. They remind me to separate myself sometimes from the work, from the spotlight. Um, I remember being out on my birthday. (laughs) We were at Vice. And some people saw me and started recording me. And my friends stepped in like, "Uh uh-uh, we're not doing that. Like, just let her have a good time, you know? Um, So they guard me in a lot of different ways. Um, And that keeps me grounded. Um, And lastly, I don't do what I do um, because nobody else ever did it. You know what I mean? Like, we have poets that came out of Buffalo. We had Lucille Clifton come out of Lackawanna. Celeste Tisdale spent time here and helped start the um, Langston Hughes Center for the Arts. Like, I stand on the shoulders of a lot of different people. Um, and I understand that. I know how important it is. I know that we are creating new lanes and creating new avenues. Um, we're introducing poetry from Buffalo to the world. We're introducing vis- the vision of Buffalo, the picture, our faces, to the world. So... I understand that, but I know that it's not because I'm so special. You know, I'm not the exception. I'm just an example. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. 
great. Uh, most of mine is a sum of what Gus was saying. Um, until I said yes to God, everything else was not functioning. Mm. Child, we talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so until I gave my guess, you know. Mm. He was holding up the mother guesses. Yeah, he was like, the, the door is here. You just got to walk through it. Everything yeah, yeah. is already written. Yeah. So it was on you to be ready. And until that happened, it's just like, okay, everything started to fall in place and there was no struggle. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think the next one is me knowing um, the impact I have. Like people say, you know, who are you? You know, I'm a bunch of different people. It's the, the power of and I'm not just one being. Yes. Um, but in Because I see you in multiple different spaces. Yeah. And I love um, that. I'm a vessel. Yes. I feel like I'm a vessel. Mm -hmm. I get people from one being to another. Um, and I think that's what's important. And knowing that whatever is attached to me is going is going soar and mm -hmm. it's going to be exceedingly, it's going to be abundantly. It's going to get to a higher level of wherever you were. So things think hold be hold, having people to hold me accountable and make sure that I know my own value and remind me of that as well. I love that. I love that way to stay grounded and making sure you got the people in the right circle. You guys have created a, a tight knit here, sure, you know, sure, of, sure. of functionality and reality. Right. You know what I mean? Um, of people that's really going to get to it. And I love the fact that it's real Buffalo, Buffalo bread here. And so, you know, on my podcast, I always ask people they G codes, you know, what, what is your G code to success? Normally I make them come up with three, but since it's three, y'all, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to let you tap into uh, one per person. So I'm going to keep leading with, with Gus so I let the ladies you know ponder a little bit on on the G code to success but you know Gus after going through all you've gone through and achieving all that you have you know really starting from the bottom now you're here yeah. um, and just knowing what you wanted to do with life you know what would be a G code that has really gotten you through always keep me a team in your circle tight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you got to be able to trust your team yes always through the bad through the good you got to have that team around you that's it i love it that's that's a good g code Jill. um figure out what you stand for figure out what you stand on and stay 10 toes <laughs> 10 toes i like it right um I was thinking about it. I had it in a way. It's coming back. Let the Lord use you. Uh, it's coming. Um, I feel like mine is... I really just had it in a left. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to think about it, and I'll come right back to you. You got it now? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's coming. It'll come back, because trust me, I have those on a, on a regular. Coming. Just mix it up. So yeah, we'll mix it up just a little bit. So, you know, before we... There we go. Go ahead. You got it now? Yeah, yes. The raising of the See? hand took me out. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> um, my G code is if you can't stop thinking about it, that's probably what you're supposed to do. Yep. So Here just lean is. into that. Yep. That's, that. that's, that's, that's a good one. The Lord needed that one to drop yeah. on somebody because that's real. Yeah. Because it's like an agitation. Mm -hmm. Even when you try to walk away from, oh, I know that one Even for if myself. You're not prepared, like if you don't have the resources. Just step into it. Once Child. you step into, oh, yep. This is know. this is the space right here. There you go. I was agitated. Yeah, yeah, and that's that is the truth. I, I stand on that one. Yeah. Good G code. So you know, before we go, I want to make sure that everybody can can follow y'all. You know, continue to see the success, support you in your individual endeavors and the collective that you guys have created. Be on the lookout for because I know the thoughts that that Gus has and the creativity <laughs> ain't gonna stop. <laughs> you might just want to keep writing just to be prepared. Stay ready, so you don't gotta get ready. That's That's it. Hard. So you ain't gonna have to like wait for a five days. Like, oh, Gus, well, I got one hour. Boom, yep, there it is. You. you know what I mean? So because it's, it's not gonna stop. It's gonna be a continuation of creation. For yeah. sure. You know, and shout out to Trent yet again to Trent. Um, for for Trent. seeing something in you and to letting you run with that. For and sure. it is such a rarity when you can find somebody to see what you see in you. Right. You're like, oh, you see it? You're right. You're right oh my right. God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we about to make something yeah. shake for because sure. when somebody can see you see you yeah. and they be like yeah go ahead run with that there is nothing like right. it because for a while you be like I know I see me mm -hmm. why y'all can't see it yeah. you know yeah. what I mean I, maybe I'm in the wrong space the wrong the wrong people but when you get that person you know look what happens yeah. when they sure. give you the autonomy to just do you yeah. and one thing about Trent like of course we see ourselves but I feel like even me he was pulling like, something Trent else out Trent saw me differently mm -hmm. than how I saw me mm -hmm. you know what I mean like one thing Trent said after we won the Emmy, we were outside on the red carpet, like outside of the theater on the red carpet. And he was like, see, all I had to do was leave it alone. 
like my job mm. was to not interfere mm. with your voice and that was like that's that's a game changer like listen game changer I didn't been in the edit sessions and I had 10 revisions mm. 10 pages of notes you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. you not to have any yeah no notes like yeah. what yeah, shout out to Trey. I've been, been getting my reps in though. So, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> Less notes, you know what I mean. But, but yeah, it's big shout out to Trent. Big shout out to, to Johnny O, which is another Emmy Award winning editor that's been here. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Justin Cameron, one of the best directors and directors of photography, cinematographers ever. He shot all of the film. Film is not cheap, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he shot everything on film, and he just came off of um, Winning Time from HBO. Wow. He was a part of that, you know? So Addison, another director, photographer, cinematographer, he's also Amazing. Emmy Award winning, super, super great guy, super group guy. Uh, just the whole crew, Rafiq from Ian Orlando, the best sound operator in upstate New York. Uh, it's just countless people. Shout out to the crew. Yeah, just, just the, the crew. crew. Big, big shout out to the crew. Big shout out to the crew. I love that. So how can the folks follow y'all and stay tapped in and support all that you got going on? It is I am Slim Gus across the board. Across the board. I am Slim Gus. That's that's all it is for me. I am Slim Gus. That's it, because that's who you are. Yes. Uh, for me, it's Poet Jillian Hainsworth on Facebook and Poet Jillian Hainsworth on Instagram. My website is joethepoet.com. And if you are interested in politics, you can follow me on Twitter because I do a lot of political tweets. She, um, she talk her but it's talk. social justice poet. Talk talk, girl. <laughs> I love it. Come on, Ryan. Um, as far as me, um, on Instagram, you can follow me at underscore R I A H H H H H H H. On Facebook, you can follow me at Mariah Robinson. On there, you will also see uh, my workshop coming up June eighth. Yes, teens, tweens, and in between. I love it. <laughs> Focusing on uh, self esteem for our. our are you it's absolutely necessary giving them also a checker from the neck up love to talk <laughs> mental health is real yeah. okay and I just sure. feel like so many of us miss the mark and and we think that it's not a necessary tool to use in the toolbox and after all that we've been through from the traumas of even reliving these things you know it's necessary to tap in so shout out to the work that you do Mariah it is grateful it is grateful well listen I appreciate y'all for pulling up with the hardware I'm looking <laughs> at the Emmys in front of me I almost don't want to touch it because like it's like <laughs> fingerprints I am just blessed to be in y'all space blessed to know you all and to really watch your journey and blessed to have been a part of some of the work you have done sure. and I just look forward to more Emmys coming our, our way and more work that you do that's amazing and I'm going to be here to be able to help put it on another bullhorn another platform and to share the great you. work that you're doing so thank um you. thank you so much you, for tapping you, in with me love what you did with this fight it is such a vibe. thank you oh, oh thank you Listen, I try to make it a cozy space so everybody can just open up Let's and just share what they need to share. Yeah, these chairs cute. are so comfortable. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Tens across the board. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Listen, I, I did the job. You guys are the first official interview in the space. Fire. Um, and I have these other announcements rolling in, but I can't make the announcements yet. But Tell us you guys are a part of it. Stop the mics. Tell us the announcements. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mic. Off, off, the, off the record. record. <laughs> I'm crying because Gus was like this. Yo, off the record. Did you think about this? Yo, yeah. I was like, yo, I love this. Gus is so industry. And I love it. Like he has tapped in all the way. But no, I truly appreciate you guys. And listen, go-getters, make sure you follow each and every one person that has been here to crack the mic to share their story because somewhere in there is your aspect and to see how you can get to your glory. I appreciate you for tapping in, whether it's AGV's Go Get a District or the GCO. Thank you for listening to the G Code Podcast. Don't forget to check us out weekly on all podcast streaming platforms. Want to connect with me? Listen, it's just so simple. Tap in with me on all social platforms at Adri V, the go getter. A to the D, R to the I V, T H E G O G E T T A. For questions, comments, concerns, tap in with me via email. Go to Adri V at Adri V, the go getter.com. Or you could text me at 214 70. Adri V 21470ADRIV and until next time you know what it is I love you so much for listening and always remember there is no need for the cheat code when you got the G code I was born in the G code embedded in my blood Matter of fact you just triggered a level orange G code security threat That's the G code